Hey, what's going on? Well, I wanted to do a video response to several emails that I've gotten regarding hurricanes and what's, what is it like along the Gulf Coast and things like that. Now, I realize some of you guys live up north and areas that aren't really affected by hurricanes. Maybe you live in a country that you don't have a whole lot of hurricanes and you're probably wondering, well, what's it like? You know, we've seen the footage on TV and things like that. And so I thought I would just talk a little bit about that right now since I do live in the uh, Gulf Coast and uh, have gone through my fair share of hurricanes. As, as you know, uh, a few years ago, they actually renamed Florida the Plywood State. But anyway, it looks like we're doing pretty good right now as far as hurricane goes. But uh, uh, we are uh, in hurricane season, but doesn't look like anything's out there developing at this time. So that's good news there. But now one of the main questions I've gotten is, do I do hurricane parties? In other words, would I DJ a hurricane party if somebody asks? And has anybody ever inquired about that? Well, the answer to that is no, I will not DJ a hurricane party because uh, when you're going through a hurricane, you got a hurricane coming and, you know, and they're telling people to evacuate the beach and get to higher ground, stuff like that. That's really not the time to be partying. Now, there are people around here who will do that. I mean, I've seen people all the time, whenever we have a hurricane, they will get their beer and they'll go rent a condo out at the beach and ride the uh, storm out. And uh, you know you hear them on TV uh, after the storm's over with. They're talking about how they sat there on their balcony, how scary it was. You know, watching the uh, the waves come crashing over, and you know how the water came in, and all this other stuff. And you know, a lot of people will say those uh, those people were so brave to be out there. Well, I think just the opposite. I think they're stupid to be out there. But that's just my opinion. You know, because I mean, you're putting your life in your own hands. But the answer to that is no. I will not DJ a hurricane party. Now, have I ever gotten inquiries about DJing hurricane parties? Well, yes, I actually have. Uh, both during Hurricane Ivan uh, and Hurricane Dennis, and even had one during Hurricane Katrina. So, uh, you know, anytime a hurricane comes, I can expect to get at least one phone call of somebody asking me if I will DJ a hurricane party, but I definitely won't do that. Uh, just because, you know, that's uh, you know, you know, it's something we need to take seriously whenever something like that happens. Because, you know, when you have a powerful hurricane coming through, this is basically what you could expect. Like, for instance, take a Hurricane Ivan back in 2004. You know, it was a, uh, a hurricane that we saw coming for about a week, week and a half uh, before it even hit. And we knew it was coming. And uh, basically what you have to do, you have to run to the store. You have to, you know, the store shelves become very bare of batteries and water and things like that. You have to get your uh, your cars gassed up. I mean, I've got two vehicles. i got my van. i got my Camaro. I'm always making sure that they're gassed up. We're under a hurricane warning. And uh, people tend to panic whenever a hurricane comes and they rush to the gas stations and uh, a lot of the gas stations uh, run out of gas real quick that's why it's always important to make sure that uh, the your gas uh, you know you get gas cans uh, gas tanks rather uh, topped off uh, when, when a hurricane first enters the Gulf of Mexico because you know during a hurricane the gas stations won't be open and even after the hurricane it seems to take forever for us to be able to get uh, get gas and um, you know, and I can remember lines uh, wrapping around city blocks, uh, you know, waiting to get gas. You know, if there's only one gas station there, you know, it's open in town and, you know, everybody's trying to flock to it. I mean, I know people that sat two, three hours in line waiting to get gas to get a little bit of gas. I mean, and that, you know, for those of you who lived maybe during the Carter administration, remember the, uh, um, the uh, gas shortage we had? Well, it's very similar to that. And, uh, you know, you can expect to be without power for up to two weeks at a time. I think we were without power at least over a week during Hurricane Ivan. I can't remember exactly how many uh, how many days I was without power, but I do know that there were some people that were without power for about two to three weeks. And, uh, you know, you gotta, you got to plan on having a, having a kit, you know, food, like basically what you do if you were going camping. Imagine uh, going camping for like two or three weeks at a time, and that's basically what you got when you have a hurricane in the aftermath if it's a bad one. Now, during the actual storm itself, um, during Hurricane Ivan, I actually evacuated. I went to my parents' house in Jacksonville. I left a couple days before the hurricane uh, hit and uh, came back after it was uh, it had passed. And uh, you know, we were still without power. I mean, there were tree limbs down all over the streets, and you know, the street lights wouldn't work. You had people running stop lights, and we tell people whatever the street lights aren't working to treat it as a four-way stop. I mean, it, it's a mess whenever that happens. And um, you know, we had uh, we had things like that happen. Now. Um, Hurricane Katrina, as you know, it devastated New Orleans and Mississippi, but here in Pensacola, we took a pretty big hit from that one, although it wasn't nearly as bad as it was with, uh, with New Orleans and uh, Mississippi, because New Orleans is about three hours away. But for Hurricane Katrina, I had to work at the radio station, and I was on the air 13 hours straight. I went into work at midnight on that Sunday night before Hurricane Katrina hit, and I was actually on the air until 1 o'clock in the afternoon uh, that next day. And I think uh, Katrina came ashore like around 7 o'clock in the morning. But even driving home at 1 o'clock in the afternoon that day, you know, there were no other cars out on the road. But uh, I have to go across the causeway to get to the radio station from here. And I can remember 
driving over the bridge and looking at the waves from the bay crashing over the guardrails onto the street, you know, onto the highway there as you're as you're driving across there. Now that was pretty scary. I'd never seen anything like that before. And uh, even after uh, Hurricane Katrina, you know, we were without power for a couple of days, and um, you know, I had to work at the radio station. The good thing is the radio station we have uh, a generator that, that powers the entire building, so we're so we still got air conditioning and all that, you know, TV, internet access, and all that at the radio station. So that's uh, that's a good thing. That's why you know, even after a hurricane's over with, that's why I like to just spend time down there because if I don't have power at my house, which I didn't at the time. You know, I was able to still have power there. I could take my electric razor and uh, charge it up, you know, and do my shaving and all that other stuff. So, you know, I had a little bit of a benefit uh, than most people do. I think that our generator there holds about four or five days worth of gas to uh, generate the uh, whole building so we could still be on the air. But the radio station during Hurricane Ivan, for example, was knocked off the air for about, I think, three or four days, something like that. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a pretty big deal. Like I said, I mean, beforehand, you got people rushing, uh, making a mad dash to the store. Which is why around here they tell people at the beginning of June to go ahead and have your hurricane supplies ready so you don't have to worry about that. You know, have you know like a like a supply of food and stuff like that stored in a closet somewhere so you don't have to worry about going making that mad dash because you got to go and get all these canned goods and everything else. That's what usually everybody does. I mean they wait till the last minute and when you do that you could be finding yourself without uh, supplies. And uh, of course you know you got people evacuating. You go see the roads clogged and you know it, it, it's not it really all that fun. I mean, it's, it's a mess. And for us working in the radio, at the radio station, I have to be on the air, you know, informing people what to do. We got, you know, bulletins going off every few minutes. We got people from emergency management in all the counties around, you know, saying, hey, you need to air this. We're here. Here's where all the shelters are going to be opening and things like that. And it, it can be pretty chaotic. And then you got people calling up, you know, asking uh, all sorts of questions. So, I mean, I'm having to answer questions about them, you know, asking them what they need to do and things like that. So, yeah, it can get pretty hectic whenever there's a hurricane. But to answer your question about hurricane parties, uh-uh, no, I never will do that. And, uh, you know, I always advise people to uh, to get to higher ground. And uh, that's usually what I'll do. Now, what if I have a wedding schedule for a weekend that a hurricane comes? What's my policy on that? Well, I tell the brides this. If uh, we do happen to have a, a hurricane warning issued the weekend of their wedding, what I would simply do is I would just credit their uh, their amount that they paid to a new date. You know, that's what we do when they, you know, they can have their wedding at a, at a future date. And uh, if I happen to be booked at the, at the time that they, uh, at the new date that they decide to select, I'll just give them a full refund. I just think that's fair. So that's, uh, that's usually how that works, or we'll e either issue them a, a credit if they've decided they're not going to have their wedding right now, but they want to have it, you know, at some point during the future and they haven't uh, decided exactly when that's going to be. You know, we'll just issue them a credit. We'll just apply it, uh, apply it toward, toward a new date in the future. So that's my policy there on hurricanes. I've never had to cancel a, an event uh, due to a hurricane or anything like that. Of course, we had a tropical storm come through here last year, Tropical Storm Faye, which I think made four hits on the entire state of Florida. But really, to be honest with you, that wasn't really anything. I, I didn't have any uh, uh, weddings or anything that, that particular weekend, but it just created a lot of rain and you know, it got people a little bit excited, but it never was uh, really much of anything. So anyway, that's uh, that's that's that as far as hurricane get, hur hurricanes go. And uh, you know, I tell you what I will do though. If we ever do get hit with another one, since I've got a video camera now, I'll videotape it. And you can experience it firsthand. Okay. But anyway, that's just it in a nutshell on uh, what it's like around here when uh, hurricanes hit. Okay, it's about four o'clock in the afternoon. I've got to get ready to uh, head off to the Pensacola Pelicans game. That's our minor league baseball team that we have here in town. And I've got to go out there and do a remote uh, broadcast for the radio station. The San Diego Chicken's going to be out there tonight. So uh, I've got to be there at five. So I've got to get ready to go here in just a little bit as soon as I upload this video. So until next time, practice and enjoy.